Hello and welcome. This is Art Cafe, episode 139. Please welcome my next guest, Greg Rutkowski. Greg is a Polish illustrator and digital artist known for his incredibly recognizable classical painting style, with his work contributing to Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, and more. His name was also the most used prompt in AI apps such as Midjourney and Stable Diffusion back in 2022, putting Greg right front and center in an ongoing AI art discussion, a topic we've covered on this show. Hope you'll enjoy this one. Let's go. just had like 10 minute conversation and i wasn't sure if it was recording or not so we had to stop <laughs> yeah. and start over <laughs> but I, I i think that conversation might have been boring or something. yeah definitely yeah let's move on to the but like I, i'm here for topics. greg not for like what's the difference between polish and english <laughs> oh yeah definitely it's like we both went through that and it's no point to going deep into that yeah again. let's not get back to it <laughs> yeah how have yeah. you been, dude? What's uh, what's Good, up with your yeah. life lately? Uh, pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> That's the summary of my like past, I don't know, four months. It's been really intense. Just to you know summarize the, you know the, the work and and anything that is related to AI and my life and my identity um, on the internet is like, it's it, it, you know. I was used to the fact that I was like digital painter, just, you know, uploading what I was doing and that's it. And right now it's like, I have to respond to, you know, what's happening around me. And, you know, it's, it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit. I can imagine. When was the last time we actually, cause we recorded Art Cafe before, like yeah. I had you before. And then we were in conversation, obviously, cause you were doing Lawrence Squared course. Uh, yeah. a while ago and then i know you did a podcast with aaron for for learn squared as well recently yeah. that was already when you were in that era of of the madness yeah exactly <laughs> that was the beginning beginning of 2023 i guess yeah uh, or it was le released uh in, in the beginning yeah but yeah it was like i think we spoke like i don't know like uh in 2012 maybe something like that no i don't i was not podcasting back then I think no, it was like 2015 something or maybe like yeah closer to maybe, yeah maybe 17 ish or something yeah it's been like it's been a couple of years 80 years or something it's like been that. it's been the old world <laughs> oh yeah yeah definitely yeah different world than today that's that's for sure i mean you don't need an, any introduction i i don't believe at this point <laughs> i don't know like you know what i mean hard um, to tell <laughs> For but I mean, most people who are gonna be tuning in, they already know who you are. Obviously, uh, super prolific, amazing digital artist. I could praise you. I, you know, you know, I love your work and I praise your work all the time. So thanks, man. <laughs> so there's no there's no need for for extra praise, I guess. Or there is always actually there always is need for extra praise. I'm just gonna you know kind of repeat myself and say yeah, really I really appreciate it. Big fan, always been. <laughs> yeah, um, vice versa. But the. F yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like we had a completely t different tone and different kind of s topics and subject matters last time we spoke versus what probably oh, this yeah. conversation is going to turn into. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, both we were in a different uh, different place in our careers. Like, Correct. you know, we had different projects. We had uh, different goals. Like, you know, right now, the life around us, like, you know, that technology went you know really high when it comes to like you know perform performance and and other things like it's it's so so much different <clears throat> than before that um uh, it's sometimes when i compare like projects that i were uh, that, that i was working on um uh, in the past like you know like eight years ago or something like that mm -hmm. it was so much different like my workflow um uh, 
you know, my office, my goals, everything. Like I had totally different path career, you know, it was, it was, I think, you know, we as a digital creatives, we're trying to like adapt to partially adapt to uh, what technology is giving us, you know, or, or the world around yeah. us is giving us. And we're trying to find the best solution to express ourselves, to find a purpose in our career. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why there's so much uh, diversity in like, you know, AI and in 3D, in photo bashing in you know, whatever. It's like everyone has different approach. Everyone has different workflow. And I think the most important part is when we do something uh, by ourselves, you know, we render something, we model something, we, you know, create a photo bash, collage, anything like that. But you know, as long as it's it's creative work and it comes from us, it's the most important thing, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Creative work is like the keyword right now. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to dive into what that means too. Yeah, but we'll we'll get there slowly because I, I want to like learn um, from you. Like, I mean, obviously, you you spoke about this on other podcasts, like. Uh, I was listening to the the one you you did, obviously for Learn Squared uh, with Aaron. Um, you also were on the 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 town hall panels with Copyright Office and Carla. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's the the big lawsuits that one of the two major lawsuits that started this year in in regards to AI art and you know <clears throat> and copyrights. So I, I, we, we will get there too, but you know, everyone kind of understands that all of it kind of snuck up on us, uh, like ju just generally on everyone, L like literally just like what, seven or eight months ago, right. With the yeah. release of mid journey, I've heard about <clears throat> Dali and the, and saw white, white papers for it, like back in 2021. But my, my impression back then was, oh, this is like far off. Like this is kind of a big deal like this this is really scary what i'm what i'm looking at but it's like there's no way they're gonna get this done like yeah in like, a short amount of time yeah creatives were on the on the the last you know yeah last uh, place on the list let's say we thought so at least <laughs> yeah exactly but it, it turned out differently so <clears throat> yeah what was your first reaction when you well actually how did you learn about it did you learn about it from the fact that everyone was prompting your name yeah, Basically. yeah, actually, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it was so so weird. <laughs> I mean, you know, I I, I was uh, aware of the technology before. Like uh, we all we all have seen the the you know this this um, it was like uh, image uh, to image generator. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure what was uh, like who, the Nvidia who, who can. Uh, yeah, um, I think it was, was. Yeah, it was a different technology, and, by the way. Yeah, different technology, but it was like a glimpse for you know something that can happen in the future. And uh, I think, like, you know, I've learned about this current technology when people send me, uh, you know, lots of messages about the fact that my name was being used in, a, in those generators. And, and before that, I was, like, typing my name just to find a project that I was involved in and just to see, like, you know, whether it was published or not. And it was, like, typing my name. And then lots of results were, like, by Greg Rukowski and was like, what the hell, mm -hmm. what, what, what's this, you know? And I was really, uh, I was just, you know, curious what, what was happening. And then people like explained me about, you know, that my name it was, was, was kind of like a one of many uh, prompts that, uh, that you can, you could use in those generators. And, uh, I've learned about the, that technology and I was like really shocked by the fact that it was progressing so much and it, it was actually like giving you really really good results already and i was like realized i re just realized back then that what well, if right now google search show me so many results that are associated with my name but are not really my works what happened in a in a year or two you know my yeah. work will be like <clears throat> flooded with those you know results and it, and it, you know what's the point of of publishing your work when you have you have you publish like one work per like I don't know month, let's say, and then you have like hundred thousands results per month from you know prompters, yeah, with your name. 
Yeah. yeah. How many times your name was was prompt? Like half a million? Like I, um, I, I would say like by now it has to be half a million at least. I don't know. I, I think it was close to 300,000. Like the la- something like, like that. last, some t- la- yeah, like last, last year. I, yeah. I think it was like uh, maybe <clears throat> like two months ago, something like that. I've checked that. Uh, but it's uh, since my name were, uh, was like um, excluded from the stable diffusion because they sort of started to like, you know, making us some updates, like uh, potentially ch- trying to fix the, you know, the hole. And, and basically it was impossible because AI cannot forget. So it's more like uh, let's play, uh, you know, good song to the you know to the horrible scene <laughs> that is happening like obviously exaggeration but um i think the issue is is pretty serious and um and me and carla and many other people you know we are trying to like you know start to do something about it and and i think it's um it has been like you know two or three past months uh really intense months with really good uh work from from the side of artists you know Mm -hmm. we started to make it louder like to speak up about the problems about the issues with uh with ai in general because uh it's not just about using you know your name using your works but also it's uh it's all the threats that are you know coming with along with that and 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 it's really important to to say it loud it loud you know because people are not aware of that which which part of the whole thing uh you think is the most concerning because obviously we can we can have like a lengthy discussions and you know we're probably going to agree on most of it honestly about where the stack tech is and where it could go i feel like i feel like the world actually is going to wake up to how powerful those technologies can be like ai just in general not even just stable diffusion but just in generally ai like there's just stable diffusion is just a blip compared to like what chat gpt and other yeah other systems are doing but <clears throat> you know that could be like 10 hour long conversation if we wanted to do exactly. that so let, like it's, it's a really long topic obviously and... focus on stable diffusion part or like just ai ai like ai generative art generally speaking yeah. um I wonder what's what in your like ba- not just from the start, but like from everything you've learned so far and observed the landscape and you know like how things are progressing and how the communities are built around it and you know what's going on and how it's already been used. Like how are, how is this te- te- technology being utilized already? What do you think is like what's the most concerning part to you and what's the part? I kind of like I want to put it in like two brackets because each technology is like. Unless it's outright banned by governments, which and by governments usually just use at such a slow pace that it's almost impossible to regulate certain things, um, whether we like it or not, that's just that's just the rude reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I wonder, like, because I want to put it in two brackets, because there is inevitable part, and then there is there is concerning part, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like the inevitable part inevitable part has something really good about it but the concerning part and how communities are kind of latching to both and how polarized it becomes it just makes the whole conversation really toxic you know what i mean yeah i mean i think like uh because when we see uh every technology that uh was invented somewhere you know along our history i think like uh each technology each invention uh, had its flaws, you know, yeah. and and at the beginning, and it's what is really important. It's I think it's the key uh, in every progression in in humanity. Like <clears throat> I think we, it's really important to notice what is what is the issue and what is the you know promising part. And noticing the issue and trying to work on that is like really key part, you know, because yeah. AI art what what was maybe like a, uh, maybe a thing without the flaws uh, for AI developers, you know? They sort of like saw the uh, the technology and they just, you know, took the whole data from Leon 5B and, you know, it's cool. Like we have AI generators that generate really awesome results and people love it. 
yeah, that's that's interesting. But along the way, we had several issues. And what's important is to cooperate with, you know, those victims, those people that are, you know, suffering because of something is happening with technology. And the same thing goes for um, any technology that it will be invented or was invented. Like, it, it generates something. Like, people, like, uh, in, in I, I believe it was, like, uh, in, in 1950s, uh, people painted the, like, metal bridges, bridges and something like that who have lead paint, which, which yeah. is really toxic. But <laughs> yeah. back then, no one really, you know, noticed that or there was no lack of evidence of, you know, uh, lack of research about, you know, the toxicity of that. And Same with, uh, like, asbestos in, in yeah. buildings, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe that's not a, you know, the greatest comparison, but I think it's, uh, it gives the point that an idea of how actually like invention works, like it's sometimes <clears throat> something at the first glance is, it's really promising, really good. But then after a while we notice, you know, several issues and we have to work on that. And those issues, we, we trying to point, point out those issues. And that's where there is a part, a uh, huge part of AI AI developers to s solve this, you know, to look at these issues and start to yeah. working on this, to kind of create a safe environment for artists, for any other people, because we we are affected right now, like uh, on you know copyright level, um, you know, mostly copyright level, but normal people like with Lens AI or you know they are they were putting their face into this you know generator. And what will happen maybe in the future, they will see their, their faces somewhere on the internet and they will be like, oh, I didn't give a consent to that, you know, it's too late because you actually <laughs> accepted the policy of this app. Yeah, and, that was a big news know, a while ago. <laughs> I was just yeah, and this, there is like awesome like opportunity <clears throat> to like, you know, create a false identity on the internet, like you know, to scrape some photographs of some people that were uploading those photographs on Lens, Lens AI, for, for instance. And that creates lots of different potential, you know, frauds and forgeries and any other violation. And that's the thing, like, they should focus on the really safe data to use, uh, like public domain or anything like that. And, you know, I'm not, because like you've mentioned, like something is, um, inevitable and we can't really stop the technology you know ai is something that is the probably the the only technology that will be you know evolving so fast that you know anything that is around it is like okay we we, ha we have like smartphones we have computers and that will be probably better you know within, yeah. within a few years next few years but ai is like right now the most important technology not not just for developers, but also for governments, for, you know, military pur purpose. And it's like, you know, so th th there's so much variety of, of using this that that's why it's so, that's why it's so important. And it's also so important to, to sort of like point out the, you know, any kind of issue of that. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, I think on the topic of identity, that's that's such a deep, deeply philosophical, philosophical, you know, topic on itself that it's like it's hard to kind of pinpoint exactly, uh, you know, what's the major issue because like I hear the argument, and this is like I hear, I mean, I I tr I've been I've been looking into AI art and actually utilizing those tools already because i you know i'm i'm not i'm not in any camp like i'm not like an anti-ai or or pro pro artist like you know like i'm an artist yeah. i remember when i was learning i remember using photos was heavily yeah. like if you used photos back in 2007 you, you were like the the worst piece of shit Cheater, we were just yeah. lucky that the social media didn't exist back then because otherwise you'd be like canceled for using photos <laughs> in your in your art like you remember that stuff right like yeah exactly you would be like everyone would just like uproaring that you're just like the worst piece of shit because you're using photos right i mean look i understand the levels of complexity and and accelerations are like not comparable between the two but the whole sentiment 
of how community reacted is actually like very reminiscent uh, reminiscent of what was happening before in my opinion it's just like you could only read those things on forums so if you didn't go on forums like nobody would actually like you would actually never know what the other people's opinions are now it's like everywhere people are tagging you on social media because like we have to use social media to actually be like recognizable to to, to a degree right so you're kind of exposed to this whether you like it or not and you know Technology, like new technologies, are divisive. Like because there's reasons for it, right? Like I think every single one of us, every artist on earth, if if you're an, if you're an artist and you didn't go through that, like you have like some fucking mental fortitude that I have never seen before, or like you're an outlier or you're a psychopath. But every artist that I know, on like from the highest to lowest level, the moment Midjourney came out, then Dali. And then a few months in, I think the sense of dread was really fucking high. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, like, is, is it over? Like, is creative exactly. work like done? Like, what's like, what is happening? Right. I think everyone has, has asked us that question and it didn't help that, you know, on social media and communities, like the most toxic voices are usually the most amplified by others. And they're like the most hard. And then you'd have like some random Joe Schmo who's like fucking never done anything ar- artistic, then just prompts like gets smart with prompt engineering by Greg Rutkowski and like, well, fuck artists. Like I can do it, I can do all this, all of this for free. And it's like, hey, you piece of shit, like <laughs> what is happening? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and like this whole conversation of like, all right, well, there's clearly a problem. Like, Clearly, the, the the Pandora box has been open. There's no way we can close we can close this unless the government is just going to outright ban everything and like sanction the the progression, which which would be stupid because if U.S. government does that, I'm pretty sure China is not going to do that or India is not yeah. going to do that or any of the big countries. Like, oh yeah, we're going to take advantage of that and fucking put some deep fakes that you know you don't you won't even know who you're voting for. You know, like yeah, it's already on the table, so it's yeah. It's- it's impossible to get rid of that. But there are That's- major issues with it too. And something that I've I've been recognizing for a while and spoke about it openly. Um, I called out on Twitter Midjourney CEO for it, like legit for what he wrote in that Forbes article. It's like, dude, like what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> like, yeah. this, is, this is crazy. And I don't know if it's a bad PR or he's just like, his perspective on the thing is just completely lacking any like a human kind of you know emotion to it i i i don't know i would I, I wish i was uh, maybe maybe i should reach out and try to see if you would like to talk to me but i, I highly doubt it <laughs> <laughs> um but like i'm not in a in a position to say like oh this technology sucks you know like, no it's, it's it's fucking incredible and it can solve yeah. a lot of issues but it also has a lot of issues too so it, it yeah. feels to me like you feel that the the fact that your identity as an artist can be easily kind of uh, melted away by how this technology works is your major concern. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, definitely, because, you know, like you've mentioned uh, at the beginning, like what what would happen if I, you know, if I if I wouldn't be, you know, used as much, you know, my name w- wouldn't be used as much. And um I think I would still be concerned about, or maybe even more concerned about the future of my career, the future of the industry, and yeah. But definitely, it it would, you know, it would be much different than than right now. But I I've seen like the progress of this over the last like you know four months, and what happened on social media, what happened on, you know, uh, in people's minds, and I think there are like two separate issues. Like one is like the you know the progress of this technology overall with without the, being concerned about the uh, copyrights issues and things like that just the progress of this technology whether this will take over our jobs and take over the industry or not is like probably like it's it's not possible right now to paint as well as as, as you know the fine fine painter you know mm-hmm. traditional painter because there is no technology right now to do that, you know. You, we have like three D printers. We have like uh, some prototypes of like you know technology that can like you know move around with pen or, or, or 
you know, uh, brush or anything like that. But I think like uh, there was one issue like where it's heading, like will will this technology take over our jobs like one by one, you know, artists, like, you know, sculptures, like, you know, anything like that. And the second is the second issue is along the way it violates all the law, you know, the issues like all the laws, you know, like like copyrights and, and identity and you know. And I guess I guess like people are still torn apart, you know, jumping into the train. Some of the some of the people are especially people are that are really uh, involved in the progression of technology, like they are, they were using all the three D softwares, like mm-hmm. you know, photo bashing, like any software that could help their creative process. They look at the, you know, AI as a as a some some sort of solution in their creative process. But I know exactly that whenever, as, if you are creative, you use the technology in a way that sort of like. You know, expands your vision, expands your possibilities. Yeah. It's it's much di- so much different than people, like normal people that use that, and and hope for the best, hope for any commission. You know, it's it's. I think it still be the the huge gap between artists using AI and normal people using AI. It's like like with photo bashing. It was like for some people, it was like yeah, you cheater, you don't don't use photos <laughs> because it's cheating. You know, and I think like. You know, we could go back in the past and and we could see all the traditional painters using models, using like, you know, a real life, you know, pro- uh, props to just paint it from the real life because we we learned that way, you know. And yeah, and I think like today we have uh, a little bit similar thing with uh, with three D with photos. When you are artist, you know exactly how to set up the lighting in a scene, how to uh, set up the perspective or how to model some, some <coughs> parts in, in the scene and, and create this beautiful, extraordinary like piece of art that looks incredible because you know what you're doing. Yeah. And the same thing goes with other technologies, but AI kind of like, you know, break that rule and creates something that looks really great just with using some words and i think there is you know this difference this huge gap between artists using photos and 3d and normal people using photos and 3d there was no advantage of of using photos in a normal way you had to know the the exact rules like lighting values and things like that and it, right now in ai this gap you know kind of like shrink to really small size because we know exactly that you can prompt some really cool words with some style of uh, you know any artist and you you can have like great results like i've seen some generated images i don't i'm not sure if that that was like based on frank frazetta works but it was mm-hmm. really similar and i was like stunned by the you know the quality the lighting the colors and i was like what the hell it's it's already there like what? What will happen in like two years? It's you know, yeah. And I'm really concerned about it because uh, I think most of the digital artists will have to uh, kind of like use this technology in a way that is is out of the reach of normal people because of the knowledge that you have or an experience, or maybe be like an art director, you know, to kind of like make the selection of the of the you know what's good what's not because people still don't have the taste like you have you have the ability to use ai generator but you don't really <clears> have <throat> this experience and knowledge and taste what's good what's not what will yeah. be a good cover and what's not yeah we could we could unfold this issue with i think the main the main issue that i have with with the with this tech cuz i know where it's progressing and i know even though i have that issue with this tech already I feel like a year from now it would it wouldn't even matter. Um, is the um, the fact that you know it's basically uh, like indiscriminately just you know oh let's take Greg Rutkowski's paintings and train a model or like train train this app to basically copy your style and then you know go for it by Greg Rutkowski you know you know what i mean like that's that's yeah. like the the culprit of it because it 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 really kills artist identity like that's something that bothers me a lot right but 
On the other hand, there is a ton, or there, there's just so much material that is already um, either public domain or not not copyrighted. It's like free to use, like royalty free material. The matter of fact, Dali has been trained on on I, I can't remember which uh, I know some stock stock sites, but they actually have a, like a deal with those sites, like you know. We are allowed to train the model on those on those images, and when you actually play with Dali, it's it's pretty apparent that everything kind of looks like a stock image mm -hmm. uh, because the models were trained on specifically on stock images, <laughs> yeah, not that, painting. Yeah. So it's incredibly incredibly difficult to get to get painterly styles out of it. But the 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 reality though of it is that I I think with enough data and interpretation of data and how it's basically mapped out as a math, that issue is going to be solved. There's going to be a way in which the words will be able to describe a specific style without, without looking at those images at all. Like it will be able, it will be able to be, there will be able to, those systems will be able to create complex enough math that will, you know, point not to one specific you know, latent space point, but maybe multiple at once. I'm like kind of, kind of riffing because I don't know mm -hmm. exactly. Like I'm not a pro, like I'm not an AI programmer to kind of like explain it to you. But I feel like that's coming and it's gonna be sooner than everyone thinks. Um, so, so if if the system can be trained, like if the system can understand what the words will be able will be able to create based on just like description of something that could possibly exist but it's not in the data set but like you know it's it's because the whole system works like weight putting weights like let's say one one to ten one is like oh it's not important ten is very important mm -hmm. it's a putting weight to a word associated with the image right so if you do like enough mental gymnastics you could probably come up with like a book, like a book of prompts <laughs> Probably, that describes yeah. your work, right? Um, so, so any kind of like stopping to, and this is something that the very aggressive uh, parts of AI community are talking about, and I agree with them. Although the way they go about it is is just not not the human level conversation. Let's say. Is that eventually, eventually, none of that will matter, you know? And it, it kind of like made me think about creative process. And this is something like actually, when I had the discussion with Steve Zapata, he was he was mentioning, you know, that he thinks that's I, I, I believe that his intention. And maybe I'm wrong. And Steve, if you're listening to this, fucking correct me, <laughs> please. <laughs> but I, I think that's where that's where it's all gonna go. And we we had those conversations with Steve. I I recently spoke with with Sam. It's it's kind of interesting that, you know, the the people who are more most affected by the like the public facing part of AI, like you guys are not necessarily like saying fuck AI, like all of that. So you're just like no, like this this could be the amazing tool, but holy fuck, like this is kind of well, first of all, scary as fuck, right? I mean, yeah. everyone thinks that, but also it's just like oh, there is like clear pro clear issues that are exacerbating the problem or or making the the tech move way too fast like it feels mm -hmm. like you're not even a, you're not even like unless you're full time into like prompt engineering and, and understanding what's going on with like different scripts that people are writing and app applications and whatever you're like you blink an eye it's like what the fuck like mid journey couldn't do characters now it's like only fans accounts of fake people you know like what, yeah, the purpose what? Is, yeah when did that happen like what the fuck <laughs> human creativity you know yeah it's like you you can predict that you, you, they gave people tool and people are like you know come up with coming up with different different purposes different ideas and that's the thing like um you know give someone a hammer to like you know to, to, to build something with nails and he will use the hammer to like kill animal, you know? And it's, it's, that was not the purpose of that, you know? And I think like, uh, like I've mentioned before, like 
the issue of or vision of the future is really scary, actually, because yeah. it's it's full of AI everywhere, and probably uh, the the our daily workflow, whether it's like a digital art or anything like coding or anything, will be much different within like next few years, or I don't know, like ten years. It's really hard to predict, but definitely it's inevitable, and it's it's sooner or later it will hit us really hard. Um, and I think we, 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 we slowly adapt to that, you know, over the years, we accepted the electric cars, we accepted, the, you know, um, all the technology that is happening, like the, the fact that, um, you know, cash flow is much smaller than like, you know, 50, 50 years ago, because of the, the, the fact that we have, you know, bank accounts, we, we do transfers all the time. And, just it's it, it's just much smaller and we sooner or later there will be no cash you know there will be yeah. like physical cash there will be like you know all the thing uh on the internet and i think you know it also has a flaw you know the, the really important flaw that people are maybe not aware when there's you know you're disconnected from the internet or electricity <laughs> you have yeah. no money you can't do shit actually yeah. you, you can't do nothing you, you know it's like yeah yeah, and, and that's why I think the balance is is really important in that field. We should uh, sort of like this develop technology along the way, uh, along the, our our progress of humanity. You know, you kind of we kind of like as a humanity, we came to the point where we are on the crossroads, whether we are still humans and we take control of it, or we are sort of like on the on the same level with. AI with technology because that's that's what's going to happen in a God knows you know how many years but probably it will happen you know and because everything is is going that way you know electric cars like smartwatches like the fact that uh, the invention of smartwatch was like the you know the idea of it was like okay let's call like you know digital digital, digital watch you know with some functions of smartphone and right now the purpose of it it's changed to the self-diagnostic tool, you know, and it's, yeah. I've read some articles about the, the idea of smartwatch that will diagnose mo most of our health issues within like 10 years, you know, because there will be so much, so many sensors and, and technology and in, in just watch to, you know, inform, to inform your hospital or doctor about any issue and, that's cool, but at the end we're we will be like you know vegetables walking, you know, clothed with all the technology around us, and we will be like just breathing, eating, and you know worrying about our health, and that's it, you know. And I and think then like the sun the, fires magnetic wave, everything <laughs> fries, and we're like monkeys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without technology. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I know that I, I may sound pessimistic, you know, and I think like, uh, but I, I don't know. I think like the, this technology, it's really cool, enjoyable. It's fun to use. And I think, you know, the fact that we have computers, we have like cars, we have everything right now around us. It, it's cool. But then there are like lots of different health issues coming up because, you know, we have like, you know, depression that is so popular right now. We have like, you know, all the anxieties. We have like, you know, diabetes. We have like heart diseases. We have cancer. Everything that is connected to our, you know, our this, these days of full of technology, full of air pollution, full of, you know, all yeah. the, the, those downsides of using and progressing as a imperialistic, like, you know, civilization like in, in general, like, you know, because Earth is like, you know, people are like talking, you know, constantly about the fact that Earth is is too small for us. You know, we we have to like expand. We have to move. Those people you know. have not flown over U.S. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah, you I have know. a city, and then four hours of like, where is everybody? And then another city. <laughs> yeah, dude. I I thought Poland was like full, an empty, like full of forests and things like that. But then. It's not really, you know, it, it's it's kind of different because most of the cities are, you know, growing and expanding with full of suburbs and, and yeah. everything is just shrinking. Like I'm talking about nature is 
it's so weird like you know europe is different though than u.s like u.s is more pockets obviously you have like farmlands and whatever but like literally if you fly over nevada or arizona you have like small towns but like they're so far apart it, li- it you're, you're literally flying through an empty space like there's just Dude, nobody like, california is the size of italy literally yeah. it's like the size of italy yeah and that's just one state and like United States is, is whole another level. Like it's yeah. just totally different. I just don't topic. don't believe in the bullshit of like we don't have enough space. <laughs> I mean, there, I there, there's an argument whether whether we have enough resources for like to feed people, based on like how how the things are, you know, how wasteful things things are. Uh, but that's that's a separate argument, obviously. I mean, I I recommend you to. I mean, I never been there, but I recommend you to fly to China or India. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see what what's happening there. <laughs> yeah, well, I had like first uh, first hand information from the from my friend who worked in China for like three years, and once he got there, he just literally like you know sit, sat on the on the couch and cried because that of many the fact people? that that many people so condensed so in one place and it was like totally different culture and he couldn't handle it for like i don't know a few first days or or a week or something or so but eventually he got used to that but uh, you know it's totally see different world. everyone can get used to it we just yeah. we can be sardines <laughs> exactly <laughs> we'll get used it's to probably, it probably <laughs> yeah in 100 years we'll be like no enough space but who cares <laughs> yeah no, i, I mean I, I don't know like enough you... i don't know enough. i mean i know china has huge populations so is in actually india has probably um, more massive population yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, uh, condensing or they're it, very I close. think it's a smaller place. It's yeah. Smaller place. I don't know yeah. enough about to have like an opinion, obviously. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, obviously I'm like not geo, like I'm not like a geopolitician or whatever. Like yeah. anyone who's like taking this uh, me seriously, too. like me you should too. just fucking chill. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> and, I mean, partially, yeah, you're, you're true. Like it, it's, it's, uh, you, I, I get your point. Like I think partially it's, is this the same thing with AI, with any technology? We should sort of like, you know, take a step back and look at the, the whole thing and yeah. create a summary of, you know, of advantages, disadvantages, sort of like, you know, take it, take it uh, in a, w- with this, with this, you know, uh, without any mo- emotions, you know, because I think it's, it's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell from like personal experiences, um, seeing people who are not necessarily because like look the reality is not everyone is creative or not everyone is creative in the same way otherwise we will all be the same right yeah yeah that's true. um and i've met a lot of people in my life who they don't know how to make art they would just it, they, even if you tell even if you tell them this is how you get to to paint and this is how you get to model it's just the way their brain works is like they will not find enough steam to actually go for it. But they have crazy amazing ideas, whether they write it, make music out of it, or just like talk about their philosophies and whatever. People people, people are very creative on like different fields and different realms. Um, maybe someone who, who, isn't, who isn't really even like a creative person might have an insight on, on subjects that, a creative person would never have like we're so yeah. unique as humans and i've met people who like man if you knew how to like direct films or like if you knew how to paint you would be like fucking world famous because like your ideas are crazy right and i feel like ai and i've seen this happen already like people who never done art they create amazing things with with like stable diffusion and the journey and whatever like you look at it as like Okay, yeah, it's you cannot tell me that this is just prompt engineering. Like obviously there's problems with like if the data like let's say the data set is using like your name specifically and someone prompts your name specifically. Like that to me is like very problematic because it's like it is kind of borrowing way too much from from one person's identity, right? But I see what people make with this and you know, you can you can and I remember going on the on the Mid Journey Discord when it came out, 
I was not impressed. Like I was just not like I looked at what people were creating. Ninety nine point ninety nine percent of it was just shit. Like it just looked like shit, right? Yeah. And then even now, with how AI already progressed and how, how like how powerful Midjourney is, how powerful Stable Diffusion is, because those are the two main players. Honestly, I think Dali is kind of like Dali is, is it seems to me, and maybe I'm not paying enough attention, but it's on the kind of back burner because of chat GPT and, and open AI and open AI basically sold itself to, to Microsoft, which is going to be very interesting to see how that develops. Oh yeah. Um, but even looking at stable diffusion, like what people create with it, uh, what, what kind of models people train, cause that's something I looked into extensively. If you go on like Reddit and see what people create, it's, it starts to look, and I don't want to be derogatory about it, but it starts to look like Art Station main page. It's just like, it's a meldew of like, I've fucking seen this before like so many times, right? Yeah. And that kind of tells me that even a tool that is so incredibly powerful like this is already kind of like showing that not everyone who is using it is actually going to be, you know, benefiting from this tool at all and then there are gems from people who aren't artists who are like the way they described what they wanted to get out of it got them results that i would like i would never come up with like if i was thinking about something specifically right and yes latent space you know images fed into it all all this kind of conversation we have but <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very interesting to see like how it's affecting how it's affecting people, um, people who are not artists and want to do like love someone else's work and do fun art, like because they love you so much they want to like do a fun art of your work, which unfortunately like oftentimes start to look better than you're like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's scary. That's scary which is like what the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, I get your point, and I think like uh, the the you know the thing is that you can copy prompts. You know, you can whenever you see the prompts, or because it's similar to coding. You know, whenever you code, you you have to know the words. You have to come up with some certain patterns. Right. Have you, you have know, you actually it, played with with any of those tools? No, yet? I've watched like many videos. I never played. Right. With, yeah. Uh, so, so you know, I'm, I'm actually on the discords, like on the mid journey and. You know, and I've been on the, their Discord for about like I don't know a few months, but I'm I'm getting to the you know to the point where um, I think you can you can look up for prompts from different people. You can oh for sure get yeah. your point. You can like people started to worry about okay, I have like really great results, and people will, like, share your prompts. No, <laughs> because you will steal that, and it, that's mine. You know, and it's much different when it comes to art. And if I had like you know a solution for most of artists or beginner artists or people that wants to learn how to paint, uh, how to like you know how to share with them like share with them my code, my prompts, you know that would be so easy to learn people. But it's so hard because there are so many you know so many factors that are combined are giving you a certain level of of quality. You have to. <clears throat> You have to come to the point where you understand value, perspective, light to get certain certain results. Then you have to, yep. you know, come through the, uh, you know, anatomy. You have to come through the like industrial design uh, or some architectural design or anything like that to to get this result. You have to get lots of references to understand something how it how how it works. You know, when when you're a concept designer, you have to know that something functions this way, and and it, there's so much knowledge, there's so much struggle with that. And it's when people ask you, how did you do that? You know, tell me. It's, it's like, and then you copy start? pasta like, your prompt. Yeah. It, <laughs> let, teach me how to use Photoshop because you just did that of Photoshop. It's, it's software, you know? Yeah. Show me that. And it, I wish, I really wish. It's, it's not that easy, you know? And whenever I, I try to explain someone, and it's like, okay, there is a point where, you sketch something from the scratch and then there is a point that you start using some colors and then they ask okay but how did you know to use that color 
whether you use that color or not, or maybe how the, you know, the value of the color, or maybe how to push it to the level, you know, where it's like, you know, it's, it's distinguishable from different art. It's like so many factors that I've, I, I created this sort of like a chart uh, just mm-hmm. for me to understand uh, how to progress, how to notice things. And most of the time it's in, it, it, it's in my head. So whenever I like, you know, mowing my lawn or something like that, I'm just thinking like, okay, remember about the most important thing in art, you know, whenever you create composition, what's, what is, what is the c- good composition? And I'm rule like, of thirds. Do, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, like, I mean, rule of thirds is like, you know, it's <laughs> just something like that the most cheese yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, just use rule of thirds, spiral. man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and there are so many topics that I'm trying to like, um, repeat to myself to, to sort of like create this pattern of what's good, what's not. Mm-hmm. And what's the best in creativity is that you, you experiment with lots of things and those experiments are the best ones, you know, and you break the rules and those, you know, you break the rule that you broke the rule of rule of thirds, you know, you broke the rule of of like golden division you know which was like the you know, golden division you know which was like repeatedly the the you know the the best rule for for any division let's say in mat- mathematical mathematical purpose or art purpose anything but you can break that using different uh different field like like you use values to sort of like um balance the unbalanced composition let's say or or anything like that and you this creativity of your uh, yours and this experience and knowledge that you've gained allows you to to break those those rules and it's so much different when you're just typing prompts you you can come up with some solutions that you, like you've mentioned like some like crazy ideas like i never i never would would have thought thought about it you know because yeah someone has different uh, you know, visual library or or ideas basically, and they come up with really interesting ideas. Like you've mentioned, like he could be like a writer or director or anything like that, screenwriter. And but he just prompts really cool idea, and the results are, you know, outstanding. And but those are prompts, and you can't really be be better in in that. You know, in that field, you can sort of like use the prompt, throw it in the Photoshop, change something, paste something, add another prompt, like, you know, kind of like uh, went through, go through multiple ways to generate really incredible piece of art, but still you sort of like, you have this, you know, visual idea of the outcome, but then you use like really, uh, really simple tool you know, that anyone can use. And that's the, that's the issue in, uh, in, in progression of in, in this field. Yeah. Well, that's actually highlights something that a lot of people don't take to consideration is that, you know, for those voices, and I, I've, I've said this before, the voices, the, the voices that are the most critical on both sides that are the loudest, those are the voices that I, I don't want to hear because they have yeah. nothing, nothing to say, honestly. Those are just like kind of out, outrage creator, kind of outrage culture. Like this is shit. I hate it. Or this is amazing. You should f- go fuck yourself because you don't like it. You know? Yeah. Like, don't this do is, that. Really. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of approach that 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 every technology will have. Like you will have people on both sides of the of the technology that love it, like die hard, or hate it, die hard. You know? Um. What what the people who with the people who hate artists, but are like calling them, calling themselves AI artists, they don't understand. And I think I, I hope this message goes goes through and maybe make them a little more chill and like more respectful to other people, as because you're, you're talking to human beings. I I swear to God, if you if you met those people, like in real in real life, not online, your tone of discussion will be completely different. Because you would see emotions and like, unless you're a, like a psychopath, that's a different thing. But those people who say like, fuck artists, you know, I'll be a new art. Like we are the new wave. We're going to like, if everyone can type a prompt, then you're not an artist. Like then everyone can type a prompt. Then the competition is going to be 
so hardcore it's going to be more profitable to flip burgers you know yeah than that's true. than be an artist so if everyone can be an artist then no one is right so you know take that out of your head like and eventually and i agree with what steven steven zapata was saying that there will be systems whether it's going to be a a year from now two years from now or whatever there there the smart minds who are working on it accelerated by how ai is already accelerating everything else like i can totally see a world in which you're going to have something like stable diffusion version version 6.7 or some whatever right like whatever number years from now which is just like connects it's an app that connects to your social media and feeds you the stuff you want to see like that makes you based based on your facial expressions and how you react to it it's like what tiktok does to you by feeding you you know the stuff like the ai algorithm of of tiktok is actually quite amazing with feeding you exactly what you want to see and making it like the most entertaining and addictive app right yeah, I feel like that's where generative art and like filmmaking and everything eventually will go. I agree with with uh, with Steven's uh, uh, prediction on that. Like, I feel like that's totally plausible, you know, uh, outcome. And yeah, that's and it's it's funny because that puts puts everyone on the spot. Like, whether you like AI or or you hate AI, like if it's if it's really gonna go that way, then does it really fucking matter? Like what? what your opinions are like that's that becomes like a much much more massive you know not only a psychological but like society problem because this is we're just only talking in the vacuum of what ai art is there's this huge expanse it's like i've i've said this when i was talking to sam i believe i i I don't know i like kind of like this kind of uh analogy of like it's like artists like ai artists and artists are like ants who are like panicking because of like someone stepped into uh into an uh you know their home and then yeah. in, in the meantime in the background you see this fucking giant like dinosaur ending comet that's about to hit earth and it's just like all the other ais and chat gpt and whatever right yeah that's true <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> like B- because yeah because our our industry is affected like our our, our careers are right. affected but then sooner or later our lives will be affected you know like you know going to store to the store like you know making groceries or anything like there yeah. will be ai sort of around us like and i think if you know i think what's the most important is to notice that to notice the issue and like you've mentioned like there are like two sides of it like pro ai against ai people that are hating each other it's it's no point of that like respect each other like just you can have, you know, different opinion about something and we can argue about it, but don't, you know, don't violate um, any any kind of like right of the another, another human, you know. And I think I think that's that's the crucial in any any issue that that will come up in the future, you know, because we have yeah. social media, we have Twitter where you post something and, you no, know, you have, you know, you're wrong and you're like... <laughs> You know, and full of hate, posts full of hate and, you know, haters everywhere. And it, what's the point, you know? What's the point? Just, you know, give me valuable arguments about something then rather yeah. than just, you know, um, violating, violating my rights to free speech or I don't know. Like, it, I, I think like the, the issue here or like the um, ignition of, of those issues are social media. Know, before oh, that we had 100 percent yeah yeah we had like like cg hub we had like forums where we spoke about art we we shared our art it was like you got the job and then our portfolios were online like you could you could like uh you know command any any artwork of any artist and there was no hate and you know well, there was, there was, a, a there was some but it wasn't like amplified yeah, some, but yeah Definitely, but so, sometimes it was really valuable, you know. Sometimes, sure. even like like uh, the most criticized uh, work of yours was a valuable point for your career because okay, maybe this guy has some point. Okay, i maybe I will start working on this field or, or you know improving myself in this kind of like you know niche. And but right now we have like uh, pointless comments of people just hating each other without any kind of like solution, any idea. It's like just pure hate. And, you know, 
and I know from my from myself, like from my experience, that it can really hit you hard when you. And I'm not really a social media guy. I'm not really reading every comment. But then, you you know, you stumble about upon the one comment that you know hits you because it's you know there's no point. In, there was no point of of you know responding to that comment <clears> because <throat> I, you know exactly that the logic of this person is like unlogical like it's it's there's no logic in this comment so it's it's no point of responding and, and talking or arguing basically and i think like you know social media is like a huge huge ignition uh to that uh, to any problem uh, that that's you know happening right now well and you gotta think how many of those comments and posts are actually real people oh yeah because at this that's point true. you just like we've heard about twitter having issues with bots like yeah. how many bots you've seen and like on YouTube, you see those stories where like deep fakes, you know, of yeah. of people talking about like pro, like Elon Musk talking about some like selling Bitcoin. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like Tom Cruise. Like I've seen this this short about Tom Cruise. Like I I literally I I thought that the, it was him actually. Like it was so well made. This this deep fake that you know it's yeah it's 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 really scary. It's yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. it's really scary. So you, you as an artist, and this is this is something that we already know. It's like when you work, when you understand art, or even if you just touch VFX, then mo- movies are ruined for you forever because like you see how they are made, and it's like, oh, it's a fucking shit thing. And then like someone who just doesn't understand VFX would be like, this is this is amazing. Like just like this kind of childlike, you know, being completely impressed by something you're like oh fuck this is like this looks like shit <laughs> yeah exactly exactly this translates to to deep fakes and all that kind of stuff like the recognition of what's real and what isn't i think that's gonna get even worse over time um but with social media specifically yeah like it's it's gonna be interesting to see like how if if you can even take feedback from people you don't really actually see in person anymore because how do you know if there are real people or or not unless it's something like it's a verified account or 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 something then you can tell okay that's actually human but what if that human actually makes their own bots to to talk for them you know (laughs) yeah that's so scary like i think it's it's already happening and i really started to appreciate movies or artworks that are human made like human handmade you know like there's a there's old polish uh movie and you've seen it uh, for sure, like it's a pot up or flood. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah, yeah, sure yeah. how it's it's it translate to to English, but we all, scene... we all had to see it because it's a book you need to read. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I, I just gonna yeah. have to watch the movie, so I don't have to read this fucking fifty thousand pages book. <laughs> exactly, it's so boring. But it's anyways, a, this yeah. was there was a scene. There was a scene where they were like, uh, it was winter, winter, and they right. they took the buckets of water with ice, and they were like just half naked. And they throw it on on their heads like it was nothing, and it wasn't CGI. They actually like stood there on the freezing weather, yeah. taking the buckets. And there was like one scene where, and actually I've seen the the video where the guy who's was like a specialist in analyzing the sword, sword fight, he saw the the fight in this this movie, and he he's because it was real you know he actually yeah. this this actor learned how to fight us with sword and they literally f- fought with real swords and and it was really cool and he said and he said that it was really correct it was really true one of the best fights uh in in the cinema you know in the, in the right basically it was so good and it is true and and over time you start to appreciate those those scenes where it wasn't f- it wasn't fake it was like you know it wasn't a cgi you know it was really truly you know uh masterfully created scene uh and it, i think it's similar to the art we, we we will start to appreciate traditional art where you have to paint something or maybe movies directed by directors with that or not using like you know cgi or or you know where the scenes are created with you know some props with some actors that are playing like like really hugely long uh you know scenes which is really hard to memorize all this all the text and and everything it's so like in in theater you know yeah it's so much different than cinema you know in cinema you're like um 
you memorizing like just a few lines in the scene and then you can always like you know uh repeat that you can change that and when you go on the stage in theater you just you have to memorize your whole like the whole you know whole um scene or whole show basically like hour long show it's it's you start to pr- appreciate their craft and the their skills and abilities to memorize everything it's it's so much different yeah i'm curious because like fuck i'm not gonna lie this, some of like ai art generators train of uh traditional art can fool you so unless you actually see the traditional art in person to tell it's oh, yeah, traditional I'm, art yeah exactly i'm just talking about yeah. seeing it in real life no yeah. it's it's like i know that it will be capable to forge this like really yeah. perfectly i feel like going beyond that then like maybe the silver lining of it of it all is that we will actually become more human and actually crave to go out and spend time with others and like be face to face and maybe that's that's going to solve like everything will become so fake and so simulated that you wouldn't even, you won't even tell if it's real or not and you'll be like you know what like fuck this shit i'm I just gonna go out and and like meet with friends or yeah go on like a convention where i can see artists or like like collaborate with artists or something you know maybe that's where that's it's really all gonna go point, really i think i think it's a uh, yeah or we are gonna really be drones point. just sitting there like like in like in wally just sitting and consuming <laughs> I don't think so. I I hope for the best. I hope that we start, you know, realizing that we come to the world that it's is really unpleasant for us. It's like full of technology, full of uh boring life, you know. We are re- replaced on each step with you know, the whole machinery, technology and it's boring, you know. It's yeah. you know, partially, you know, we we are painting because it's fun it's it's enjoyable to do especially your personal work you know ip you're working on ip where you're coming up with ideas you you know transfer it to the canvas or you know photoshop or 3d or anything and you create this final outcome uh, you know we're using all the tools but it's it's yours and i think it's really enjoyable and just imagine using you know ai in your work like you're sitting starting your work day typing prompts okay no not that okay next one next one okay that's cool okay work done <laughs> it's, it's it's impossible yeah. for me to work that you know and i mean when my journey came out i was on the like a week's long binge of just fucking typing and making stuff right because i was just so impressed on what it can do and i was just kind of like trying to test how far i can push this see like where it's 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 kind of actually interesting to see like your approach and some other of my friends like i remember talking to ash about this and we would just like send each other because we've done like i think we've done like between ourselves we've done like thousands of images with mid journey right and we'd send like look at this like what the fuck like what, what am i even looking at but the novel the novelty of it was that oh my god it's so impressive to look at that you can actually do it from text I mean, that's where it, where the novelty came from. And also just the fact that, like, he almost felt like you made it. You know, like, you technically did, but but really, really re- you really didn't. Because for those who don't understand what, what stable diffusion models in general do, it's like there's this term called latent space. It's like mm-hmm. imagine being in a massive library and they have index where, where the, some, like, in not only 2D, 3D, or 4D, like, it's like a 10D space, right? time fucking you know multiverse you know sort of like in terms of how complex it is right but generally speaking it's like going to the library with a ticket number and then finding where that ticket number leads you to to like that one specific point on the shelf and you open it that's your image right so if you have the same number and the same data set and basically if you copy prompt and then use the same model you're always going to get the same, exactly same result. It's basically indexing to that one image. So like Mm -hmm. if I give you my seed number and my prompt and my, and the data set that was used and you run it on your computer, type in exactly same seed number, 
exactly same prompt, exactly same size of an image, and exactly same model, you're gonna get exactly same image. It's not gonna be new. It's not like the the machine is gonna create something new, right? It's gonna be yeah, exactly. literally it's a mixer, pixel to p- pixel to pixel, same thing, yeah. right? I feel it, it's a little more than a mixer. Like it's so yeah, difficult but... to ex- to, but it's I guess I guess mixer is like the the most sort of like basic yeah, level explanation. Um, but then is it the same then if you do like something like in paint or if you do something like the out painting, which is like extending the image, right? And I think that's yeah. the conversation you guys had on the on the town hall as well, or maybe that's something in the video that I've like one of the copyright issues video I've I've heard about that that might have been the corridor crew discussion. Um, and then another level is just like what is the what is the purpose and intent of using the using that let's call it software, right? Because it is software. Uh, what's the what's the intent? Is the intent to prompt by greg rudkowski here i'm greg rudkowski fuck you yeah exactly (laughs) is that your intention or is it something more akin of like let me see if i can use it for like vfx purposes or maybe i'm like terrible at background i hate painting backgrounds but i love making characters and let let's let's have this tool like help me with the backgrounds you know it's almost like yeah like there are, there are car character concept artists who would just throw in a photo in the background because I yeah. don't care about backgrounds. I just want to have something nice, right? And you respect them for being amazing amazing character designers. You don't really care what the background is, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Stuff like that. Or like even in animation, like, okay, maybe I want textures. Maybe I want like a s- specific style in the shot. You know, maybe there's like a c- certain like a creative input that I want to go after. I can totally see like I don't I have like zero issues with that whatsoever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main issue like, is like yeah. the intention. Like, what is what are you doing with this? Like, what are you what are you trying to achieve? And I think that's exactly. where the conversation gets lost all the time because people get like super emotional about it. For one, you feel like a god using AI because now you can be an artist, right? And like, why would I hire an artist? This is actually the the saddest part to me that the 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 only like one of the industries that is for sure already affected and will be completely wiped out possibly is commission artists Mm -hmm. i just don't see a reason why would you hire commission artists like uh, it's it's fucking terrible thing to say but for someone who just like i want i want to have a character for my warhammer you know role-playing game that i play with friends like I could hire an artist, pay them like hundred, two hundred dollars, or I could just use Midjourney or something, and I was I gonna get like ten results and just pick the one I like, you know? Yeah, that's that's the first wave that will be, you know, yeah, will be, yeah, will be excluded. I think because uh, most of the, especially when you when you start uh, in any any industry, you you know you get a lot of commissions from. Uh, from entry level, uh, you know, maybe not like from the entry level position or from, you know, lower budget clients or, mm-hmm. or projects, and that's where we all began, you know. And we and I think like uh, this is easy rep- replaceable with AI because mostly these are like projects like you've mentioned. It's like a, a role playing personal role playing game or like my first, you know, uh, novel or graphic novel or anything like that, and they hired artists just to fill uh, their like empty spaces with mm-hmm. with some cool images yeah uh, affordable images and you can replace that uh with ai but then later on when you when you evolve as an artist and you have bigger projects you so start of uh you, you start to see lots of um projects that are requiring more consistency in projects so they want to have this character that you know they have an idea they send you description we you talk about you know every detail okay i will you know i have my portfolio you you've seen my portfolio you can you know what i'm capable of and they you know they they get you they give you an assignment uh, an assignment and right after that okay let's do another character in this same style but with you know this this one will be a little bit different and you have to create it in a similar style in, a, in the, with this consistency and with ai i think for now it's uh it's actually like, already uh, solved 
Oh, really? Well, yeah, I can tell you that. Sorry. So you already have models that create, that understand how to do turntables of the same character. Oh, okay. You have prompt engineering. It's it's like, it's the actually the new, like the, it's almost like a new sector of work that's been created overnight. It's called prompt engineering. And it's not specifically like for AI art related. It's just generally, uh, it's it sh already shows its its uh, its results with ChatGPT. You have prompt engineers mm -hmm. who do it as work, and they create applications, Chrome Chrome extensions that utilize ChatGPT technology to automate certain tasks that normally would take you like time. Uh, or or create scripts like something I've tried with ChatGPT, for instance, is like I've I've made it to make me scripts for Blender, so I can automate sp specific tasks. For instance, like it takes you several clicks to make so that you the selected object gets like UV unwrapped, like just mm -hmm. a standard unwrapping, like just like fucking make me random UVs. Like I don't even even care. Like, I don't care if it's like nice or not. Just make me UVs. You have to click the fucking thing. You have to like go to edit mode, change the tab to UVs, you know, select all yeah, polygons. Yeah. And like it's and now it's just one button that I have on the bar, like boop, and it works, right? And so it's the same for like getting consistent results. There are like tons of videos that show you how to engineer, like prompt engineer your way to actually get consistent results. So you have exactly the same character, but in the different views, right? It's mm -hmm. not perfect. But it's got them close, and it's already there. And considering, like, six months ago, characters were not possible in Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion. I just don't see any of those to like be be problematic. So it's just like a ver never ending kind of progression. Yeah, you know but what it's I mean? like I think yeah, I think like uh, because it's it still doesn't give you a solution for. I mean. Because you're stuck with one software, you know, it's like uh, right. whenever, because let's say the stable fusion will, will you know, expand and it will be like, like a major player on a, on the, in the industry and people will use it on daily basis with clients and everything and, <clears throat> and they control, they control the whole industry because whenever well, they announce something, you know, or, you know, yes, when, yes and no, just, just, just real quick. Yes and no, because... Yeah. And it's it's so I, I think that's that's the part where I'm like when I go on like Reddits and, and read about what's what's going on and whatever, it's like I get shot like almost I had like a shock therapy. It's like my assumptions about what's what's there and what isn't is it's just like const, const, constantly challenged. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> uh, well, stable diffusion is open source, so you can technically take the take the code and make your own stable diffusion version of it, or like diff completely something completely different, right? Stability AI, which is like what what the stable kind of stable diffusion is, is like the company that that cre I think they created it. And they also kind of yeah, keep yeah. developing it, but there's no one, nothing stopping you from like getting a bunch of engineers who will take what already exists and make a completely different spin-off. And then, I mean, yeah, you know what I, I mean? mean, yeah, I know what you mean, but I was heading to, to this this point where, um, let's say, um, a really good example is Yama. You know, he's creating like really cool, you know, three D, you know, right. scenes, you know assets everything like he's really talented i mean talent skilled um this is just badass you know and and what's really cool is that he's using he's using like lots of different softwares but then i know exactly that he can do it on canvas on paper he can sculpt it sculpt it and in the real clay it's like this no it's real renaissance is, man yeah it's like <laughs> that's why i'm saying like i think most of the artists right now are capable of of you know doing that in uh, in traditional medium because of the knowledge and experience right you know i'm saying like because of you know and prompt artists let's say uh or promptists um promptists, will, <laughs> promptists yeah um new term that will, yeah yeah it's actually a new term i mean it's it should replace the ar artist because it's kind of like confusing promptist. Actually, yeah, promptist. i like it i like it yeah let's go with that uh, yeah, but I think like uh, in a matter of next few years, you know, you are really 
dependent on the on the software that you're using and whenever this software right. will be you know disconnected or you can't work because you're just just got used to typing prompts and you can't really transfer your knowledge and your ideas into different software let's say i can paint pretty much the same image like on different software you know or even like yeah the, the simplest simplest like software like paint or anything or even uh, uh you know with crayons or probably it will look differently but uh but still your knowledge skills are pretty much the same you know you have different tools and and i've actually i've um experienced that photoshop has really interesting solutions and the fact that you have undo, you have like you can transfer, you can flip your canvas, you can add layers. It's cool. But then when you paint a canvas, it's so much different. It's so cool. It's like a meditation. You can actually like the with the color, it's like when you paint, you usually, you know, um you sample the color, you mix not a mixing. Actually, you sample the color, you you get some color, you paint. And then you sample again, and then you paint. And when you paint on canvas, you can mix the colors. You can create this palette palette with colors that are not really achievable on in digital world. Like it's it's so much different. Like it's it's yeah. a totally different level. And I think you know there are like pros and cons uh, in digital world and in traditional art. But the fact that we are creatives, we can connect those. You know, we can work digitally. We can we can work traditionally. More or less, because it's obvious that most of the people that are stuck with with Photoshop for past like twenty years, they will have to like work a little bit to get you know some skills or some knowledge uh, with traditional medium. But the knowledge and and experience is pretty much the same. Like you know fundamentals that you have like with lighting, you know value composition is pretty much the same. Like you know it's, it's, the tool is different, and I that's. That's my point against the AI. Like AI, okay, it's a, it's, I cannot say that is a tool because it's a, without that tool, you can't create, you know? And I could like sculpture, uh, when, when you do a sculpture, you can use the different tools, but you can also like create something with a mod with your, you know, bare hands. Um, and the same thing goes with, 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 you know, painting on canvas. You can create something or Photoshop. You can create with the newest Photoshop or with the big canvas with lots of paints. But you can also, like, take a charcoal and paint it on the, on the you know, on the pavement or concrete or wall. It's like Banksy, you know. It's like you have this knowledge, you have some experience, and it's worth to pursue that. And I think there's this passion that is inside us, the creatives, it's really worth to spend a few years to work on that rather than just typing in prompts and hoping for the best. And because yeah. I think, it, yeah, we, we are really dependable on the, on the technology, too much dependable, you know? And I think it's... And it's, more so every year. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. And it's, it's, it's a bad thing, in my opinion. I agree. Like, oh, there are certain, certain aspects of it where, where I think we can go beyond. But I do agree... Uh, about the, the your, your general proposition that yeah, if you're just solely relying on the fact that you're quote unquote prompt engineer and now the software changes next year, if next year it makes the changes are made so that you don't even have to prompt anymore, but everyone can just type like typical descriptions, and but yeah. the software is sophisticated enough that it doesn't require prompts, then you're basically your your, your profession existed for only a year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally yeah, agree. I, I totally useless. agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Like the your value is is nothing really because client can do it by by himself. You know, because the technology progressed to the point where there is no need to to hire like prompt engineer or any anything like that. And this goes back to the subject of like if everyone is and this is I, I I've heard Ash said it on his podcast and I'm kind of like I want to give him credit for like using that 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 phrase because i've heard it from him that every, if everyone is an artist then no one is right yeah that's true that's that's, that's true that's basically sort of like the proposition but that that already becomes so bleak because then like how do you even like cope with that idea that everyone can be because let's let's face it like mainstream 
main like mainstream let's call people mainstream and then let's say artists are like on the more on the creative spectrum right mainstream people don't care beyond what's already what's what's already possible right if you mm -hmm. show any of like ai generated images for them it's for for a mainstream person it's amazing and it doesn't need to be any better it is something i realized quickly working in film and in video games and and is that there's only a handful of people and there's only certain um uh, aspects of like artistry where you have to be on such a fucking high level it has to be extremely sophisticated for a mainstream person to actually recognize it as something special right mm -hmm. i think the great example of that is alberto mielgo like without a shadow of the of a doubt for for mainstream people who are just consumers they they can recognize that this is something special compared to like any other like love death and robots animations right mm -hmm. there's a reason why there's a, a massive fan base of like people who are recognizing alberto's work and you know doing cosplays like cosplay speci specifically for his yeah. films right um but that's very rare right most people just don't they just like cap at certain level of like this is awesome and then everything beyond is just doesn't, doesn't matter when you work in film industry producers are, are like that like they cannot rec like they cannot tell you if you hire two artists and we as artists will say this guy is great this guy is ah yeah you know the producer will be like you guys both are great because they cannot like process the info information that we're talking about like let's say like there's certain aspect of composition. Like this guy is better at composition. You know, this girl mm -hmm. is better at colors. You know, this person is better at you know, uh, I don't know, like ideas and like how they compose ideas together and use different lines and, and like different styles or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are very intricate kind of skills that I feel like only artists, like artists who are like deep into the subject, recognize. And then everyone yeah, else, like just read, they might see the difference, but they don't really know why. And then you just don't, they just don't care. It's like same like me talking about music. Look, I can tell some music is great. I can tell there's like some outliers, but the rest of it is really taste, right? Like I kind of, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. I don't I, like I pop point, music. Yeah. I like metal. And then someone will, will say completely different, but we're both on the same level of, of like just completely not understanding how the music is made. You know? Yeah, and there, and, and there is a jazz music, you know? Where yeah, and there is actually just... skillful artists are like, right, condensed but most in one people niche. don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Like, that's the point. Like, I mean, that's the point. Like, most of the people are not really uh, pursuing being an average person, you know? Everyone at fashion, everything, you have to, uh, there's a, there's a high high priority on uniqueness, you know? Yeah. We have like, we are unique as a brand big brand because we offer you 100% natural ingredients. Or maybe we offer you like really specific style, really specific colors, and that makes you, you know, unique on the street, let's say. Or the same thing goes for uh, music industry, you know? No one wants to copy something that you know, has been played for many years that it's average, you know, it has to be, it has to be like, a, maybe not new, completely new, but it has to have this, this really specific, uh, you know, value in it, like, um, whether it's a, you know, tone of voice, or, or like, you know, color of voice, or maybe like, a totally different style, like, or maybe style of the, you know, uh, of it's of this person, like, you know, because many people shock, you know the the publicity of just being like a more like a fashion model than than musician you know but still it's a part of being uniqueness you know unique and and this uniqueness is is really important and it's really noticeable in many fields like in the art industry also like we have tons of similar you know artworks we have like really generic landscapes with the knight on the horse and the castle in the, in the background and it's the, the this uniqueness has to be uh showed in uh shown in uh it can be shown in many levels like you can create it's the same generic idea but with really unique style you can create uh this boring style 
in, in this boring style, but really unique composition or unique, you know, place, landscape. And I think, you know, art, AI art basically don't really solve that issue. Like it's, I already see that most of the outcome of the AI is really generic, really pretty much the same for me. It's really hard yeah. to, to see something that is, oh, really, it was created in AI generator. It's all, it's so cool. It's really well made. No, it's pretty much like 90 something percent of the, this AI generator's out, outcome is pretty much the same. And, and after like a few months, it starts, it's starting to be really boring for me. Like, you know, I don't really yeah. see the purpose of using that. And as if I see that boring, clients probably don't want to have it in, uh, you know, in their like uh, portfolio as a, as a, you know, in especially like, uh, like game cards, like illustrations for, for, you know, book covers. It's, it's, it should be like unique, you know, to catch any potential customer eye. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, first, I, mean, I know it's going to be, like, impossible to predict, so I don't even want to go there. But I do agree, like, that's, that's what when I was saying, like, playing with MidJourney and, like, being, like, awed by the results. But, like, that, that wore, worn off, like, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Same goes to, like, I, I agree, same goes to imagery that's created by, like, purely just prompts. It's, like, it, it's quite impressive at, at first, but when you see it, so many times over and over it's the same thing then you're kind of le level of like it's not impressive anymore kind of like that the novelty of it wears off pretty quickly i think that applies mostly to pretty much all humans right like if you see something mm -hmm. something that's on a certain level it's like okay yeah well, it's whatever it's like imagine watching a movie from 30 years like the movie with vfx from 30 years ago like even an average person now is so like oh it's, it looks whack you know yeah like the effects are shit um but but generally speaking in the moment of time like my point was that the the mainstream kind of reception basically kind of the cutoff point is is somewhere there and people just don't care if it's if something is like more creative or or isn't. So for like the mainstream person looking at something that's created by let's say stable diffusion that replicates someone's styles or is or is new and fresh, but can be replicated many times because of the the nature of how it's done, then yeah, at first they'll be impressed. But then it's like mm, yeah, whatever. Like it's not going to be impressive anymore. The, the 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 byproduct of that which is unfortunate i don't i don't think that can be stopped what a what a and this is sort of like the point of our discussion is that it diminishes artist value like horribly right yeah and right. so i think the point that i always tr like in the more i learn about it and the more i talk about it is trying to make is that well you can sit and be like ups upset about it and I think everyone to a certain degree is that what it, whether it's like ethical or not, like it's upsetting to see that there is a technology that potentially just wipes the entire industry. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's totally possible. It will. And you, you know, beyond courts and whatever, there's not really much they can do, but, but only like rely on lawsuits. My worry is that the lawsuits are gonna fucking drag in the system for so long that the tech itself is gonna completely change by the time they're resolved, and now you have a set of different issues. Because this is something that, like, look at social media for instance. Like, social media has so many problems, and it took years to to yeah, solve those problems. Yeah. And that that thing is moving fast, but like nowhere near fast as like what AI is doing, right? So that's why I think, yeah, go but ahead. I do, do not want to just to kind of finish my point. I do not want to diminish the fact that I want to see more lawsuits. I want to see fucking thousands of lawsuits because if you don't see lawsuits, if there's nothing is regulated and nothing is like hashed out, like what's moral and what's right, then you have crypto. Like I yeah. love the concept and ideas behind web three. I l did love the initial sort of, what NFTs are supposed to be, and I, and, you know, with with I've I've minted a bunch of NFTs and done a few projects, but it was always with the same premise of like, you know, 
it's about the the provenance the the, the digital artist footprint and how it can be utilized and what what kind of like cool things you can do with this technology right and fucking it quickly turned into monkey pictures and and scams yeah. and rug pulls and 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 then ftx eventually right and then like everyone fucking hates crypto now even though like ironically if that technology developed correctly then you know some of some of the ai issues would be would be solved already like already solved with with you know with blockchain and whatever right like that's su- that's such a fucking ironic thing <laughs> yeah again <laughs> and then we, yet we're people hate the, both <laughs> yeah again we, we're coming to the point where um where we have the same issue or the f- same pattern we have technology like nft at the beginning like initial idea idea was really good and i f- i thought that pretty much the same as you like i thought that this would be like really good idea for this uh especially for collectors for, uh, like going into the digital you know uh collecting world where you can actually buy some some artists uh you know work and sort of like treat it as a as a you know normal traditional collectors where they buying like art on on you know auctions or like art for magic magic the gathering or anything like that basically and i thought that this will go this direction but you know eventually it went in a really crazy direction that probably no one actually you know could predict but the same thing goes with ai like deep fakes yeah deep fakes like ai porn like things that are like you know not supposed to be there like because you know ai art should be for the people that wants to create some or, or like boost their creativity or um, democratize art or, you know, all the slogans that and, 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 you know, banners that are usually held by those AI develop developers. And, and it's, it's heading into really weird direction. And right now it's really interesting to most, most of the people are like experimenting with it and it's really, really good. I mean, you know, despite all the flaws that I mentioned and all those things that are the topic of the, you know, lawsuits and regulations, you know, it's, it's heading in a real, really weird direction, but it shows us the, the same pattern. And I think governments should take a lesson from that and should, you know, start forming some sort of like a, like a, you know, quick response, uh, you know, facility <laughs> to sort of like react to those. <laughs> Have to you those ever been to DMV? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you it's know, the same people. <laughs> They're just more con artists. The, the more know. con you are, the, the higher you get. <laughs> and, I, and I think because we are still at the point where it's not really a threat for most of the people. Yeah, like especially politicians are like, okay, right. it's, it's probably a threat for AI artists. I mean, for artists, you know. But it's far, far away from from the real issue for normal citizens. But as soon as it will touch, you know, their elections they're uh, uh, you know the yeah the uh, come close to the elections there'll be like immediate response from the politicians it will be like regulations <clears throat> will will you know will come right off the sleeve and it will be so fast that you know all the issues with the internet with social media okay it's it's an issue but it starts to be a huge issue when yeah. ru- when there are like Russian hackers that are hacking elections and they have like you know you know influence on on you know presidential election in the United States and probably that's that's the place and time where things will start you know going a little bit faster but as you said lawsuits are quite important and pushing for you know any regulation that will make a foundation for future sort of like rights uh, to treat AI and any technology, you know, especially against humans and I think, and then human rights. And I think it's, it's so important and governments, I mean, I know, I know it's, it's uh, like a, a crazy idea and, and, you know, expectations from governments to react to that technology because technology and government. Oh, they react it's, it's, just slowly and, not yeah. what, not what you expect <laughs> it's so opposite like technology is progressing so fast and governments are reacting so slow that it's like combination of those two is like yeah yeah crazy so what do you think in the midterm like okay like i, I think we're we it's 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 very interesting because everyone i talk with 
about this, everyone at least that I know personally, whether they are like, what do they see more problems or more benefits out of like what we have here? Because like it snuck up on us, we didn't really have much time to think. So everyone is like thinking on the fly. Some people like really love it. Some people really hate it. But I think broadly, we all agree on 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 certain like the like probably most of the aspects of it. Like yeah, it's very fucking problematic that someone can abuse the name of an artist, literally claim that they are them, and then like that kind of like that's that's a real problem for for the brand of the of an artist, right? It's yeah. really problematic that you have people who um who use this technology and become grifters just the same way as grifters overtook uh mm -hmm. you know nfts and crypto and the results of it is just like yeah people are fucking greedy and they'll do everything for money and they'll like have no morals whatsoever so if you think that ai does not need any of like like hey let's take a break and think about it or like at least regulate certain things like if you if you think that that's unnecessary then we'll look at like we already have a, a a perfect statement of what happens if you don't do anything it's 2022 and crypto like holy yeah. fuck um and what are you like dude i i still believe web3 is the way like like i i believe that nfts have an, an immense power of what they can like the value that they can bring right maybe yeah, ai will right. change it maybe ai will come like you know those those tools over time will create something that's more more interesting and more more problem solving but that's not going to happen if if the same amount like the same quality of people going to overtake it and they they already are and we will create a narrative that that doesn't work it's the narrative of grifters is not going to be for artists and for people who love ai art or are like yeah, a, you know exactly. if, uh, talking specifically about ai art because there mm -hmm. are other aspects that obviously we're not touch upon. But if you let grifters and, and assholes and pieces of shit like take over and create the narrative, then you're gonna like fucking hate your life because you're you're none of the none of the sides gonna win anything. Everyone's gonna lose. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think like uh yeah, narrowing down narrowing it down to AI art, I think AI is maybe not useless but it's not that really important to creatives to because we already have lots of tools to use you right know, people just just buy some courses online and you can within a year or two learn how to paint like simple figures or like simple landscapes and within like three years i I've, I've seen people that after three years of learning from courses they are really skilled like they really they can produce really really good looking images it's just a matter of your devotion to the to that craft you know and and the the thing is that ai in general is really promising that's why many times i'm you know i'm saying that ai is something that can really help humanity in terms of healthcare in terms of solving like really impossible math mathematical uh, you know issues like it's yeah. impossible to solve it right now but with with ai we can solve it like you know, uh, much faster, basically. And those are really important issues, you know, like, but AI art is like, it's, it, I mean, those generators are not really useful, that much useful for people, for creatives to be creative. B because if you are creative, you can, you know, create something uh, with Photoshop or you can create, you, you can write down your ideas, you can create uh, I mean, because many people took this tool as a as a generator of the whole product. Like there yeah. were like a couple of campaigns of Kickstarter with tarot cards, with some comic books, like gra graphic novels, and that's the thing. Like you you created something, you had some idea more or less good, and you you delivered the whole art. Uh, art layout with AI generator but you know what if everyone start generating those comic books and graphic novels and everything it becomes and, worthless yeah yeah it's worthless yeah. It's, but that's, unfortunately it also just all the casualties that are going to suffer 
from that happening is artists, in my opinion, are artists who refuse to see the reality and not do anything about it. What are what yeah. are like? Because I mean, I I think we agree that I don't think that's gonna stop. Like where the way the technology is is going. So my take on this is that to me it is it is a tool, and I understand like. And, but let me fra- let me frame it in a way where it's not a tool if if it's just out of the box solution that anyone can replicate. That's not what I mean saying saying tool, right? Because if I can use AI generators to to do something that then someone can replicate in five seconds, then that's not a tool. That's a commodity. That's something that everyone. It's just like drinking water or whatever. Like, well, I, well that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some places yeah. are without water, which is kind of like I agree. For you, it's a tool, definitely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I like I look at it. But I don't know. Like I've I've dabbled with like I've done a bunch of things with 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 uh, stable diffusion specifically because I I to me. I don't really see value in in Mid Journey anymore. Like I feel, I, feel, I think even Mid Journey is is kind of based on stable diffusion. Maybe I'm wrong or not, but it's it's more of a closed box and it's very limiting, to be honest. Um, so I, I've de- delved myself with trying to understand how stable diffusion works and what kind of scripts are out there, like how it's how it's being used for g- video generators. You know how it can actually be used to create new ideas or or try things or you know uh what are the ethics of it how do you train your own models what, what was really surprising to me is that you can train your own models with just 20 images mm-hmm. like literally yeah. 20 images and it's gonna replicate your style specifically right um so that made me think, like, what if you just build your own army of Greg Rutkowski's, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which like, is that's fucking scary. fantastic, right? But the problem is then every, everyone, because it's open source and it's not regulated, then everyone can do it. And they're like, well, what the fuck? Is, are we going to all have, like, Greg Rutkowski's art everywhere and nothing else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's, I'm joking. It's, so, it's so pointless. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But it's so pointless. Like, you mentioned, like... Uh, it's so pointless to create something that should be new. Oh, I come up with idea to, to, you know, train the AI generator with right. this guy. But then what's the, what's the unique in that idea when someone else can just, you know, easily do the same thing. If it would belong to you and you only, and you would have like a guarantee that no one else can do it. I think that's sort of like the utopian view that I would like be behind where it's like, cause to me, to me, stable diffusion is more of like an accelerator accelerator of productivity towards the goal that I want to make. So, for instance, when you talk, like I can imagine this couple of scenarios. Like, let's say you talk with clients, right? And you're mm-hmm. supposed to do client work. And on like the lowest level, you're supposed to do illustrations, right? You can, you know, instead of like, gathering references to kind of explain your ideas you you take stable diffusion for instance and then you generate a bunch of images that represent exactly your idea because you're going to prompt it in a way where you want to have like specific like you will find with your mind's eye with your experience in art with your experience with composition color and everything you've learned as an artist which i totally agree that whether you like or hate stable diffusion or AR, AR art in general, that those are the, the skills that no one will take away from you, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's what gives artists actual edge over everyone else who claim to be an artist, in my opinion. Um, you can take those and and prompt some ideas and then like show it to a client. So like, look, like this is kind of the ideas I'm playing around. Those are, those are the references, and let's work with that, right? And you can then, you know, either repaint or make it better or like start over, like ch- change styles, just be more iterative. And then mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to like the process because you're still doing a creative creative work. You're still like applying your skills um, and you give more options to a client. Like if we were just talking specifically artist client relationship. Right. And. It can go both ways too. Like it can be like, oh, this is gonna be like the most boring thing because like my client might just like the references and the, just, the job is over. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> you know, or like I mean, you've worked with clients who are like fucking sending you notes to to no 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 end, and you're like, yeah. if you send me one more note, I'm gonna fucking quit, right? 
So what if now, that, like, hey, can you like fucking fix the little hair? Like, like you should just in pain, just like fix this, fix that. Like you just like one click, you're like, you don't have to like, or you literally record conversation with the client and then just apply it as a prompt to fix your yeah, image. It's, like, <laughs> it's yeah, I think it's impossible to apply the, those corrections for the existing image in AI. Like, I mean, it's impossible. I mean, the way... Not now, but it will be, do, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it will be probably, yeah. That's true, yeah. I mean, the whole point is like, I think I think what, what when you, let's say, start to, you know, exercising or running and you can run like for... Uh, 10 miles, you know, and it's exhausting and yeah. you're getting better and you can run like 20 miles, you know. But then, oh, I have a new tool, which is called like a bicycle. I can do it faster. Or and, robotic and without, legs that never yeah, make you without, tired. <laughs> exactly. It's like, for me, it's like, okay, you, obviously you can run faster. I mean, you can, you can, you know, go through that, the whole like a uh, trip even faster. But then, What's the point of that? You know, there's, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's sometimes I think like when I see the this progression in technology in the world that we regressing more than progressing. When I look up for references, especially old masters like Sargent, like Soroya, like all those awesome artists from the past, and their skills, like I'm. You know, I'm downloading the really high quality images and I'm trying to like, you know, notice all the brush strokes and I see how how they painted it. And it's so hard to replicate their their their, their style. I mean, there are like tons of people that are copying their specifically their, you know, paintings to learn something on and it's it's valuable, really valuable. But then you appreciate their craft and right. how long journey they, they went through. And the, it's similar to like running those 20 miles and then just, you know, riding a bicycle and then riding a car, driving a yeah. car with this. And it's, it's pointless because you have to go through that journey with all the, the, suffering. the knowledge and look at the, all the, um, you know, advantages that you, you gain during the, the journey when you, when you run, you know, you have health like some some pluses to your to your body like uh, lots of different uh, advantages and then you know driving the car it makes you fat makes you you know you have like health issues and similar here you use ai and you think that you create something but then over time you do, you're not getting you know through the whole process uh, with this awareness, like like you create something when you notice little details, like you paint anatomy, you paint face, and you see, oh, this muscle is is creating this shadow, or this this yeah. bone cast casting this this you know really specific, um, you know shape, and and all this experience is really important. And back then, like hundred twenty two hundred years ago, people were like going if they didn't know something they didn't knew something they went to the library they find out you know they by reading books or analyzing different you know paintings and i'm saying about the, this progress because they people people were much more aware of what they're they're doing and they were aware of what of the you know technical uh aspects and right now okay we are using computers but most of the people don't know how computers work or they don't know how to you know, like code anything. They just use uh, social media. They type. It's it's just progressing to the to the even deeper reg regress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the yeah. It's definitely more regressive. I agree. It's uh, it's almost like we. What if what if Earth had already stable like stable diffusion in AI before, and people became just so dumb. That yeah. they couldn't just understand anything that they were doing. They were just using tech, and then like a solar flare wiped everything. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> which, it's which like, is like exactly the scenario that could happen to us. And then everything is like, you know, like dude, it's a I grand think reset. Matrix, Matrix is like like really possible scenario when we right. we, we will get to the point where we will be like just feeding the technology with our bodies, you know, because yeah. partially it it is already happening. Because we are like sitting in front of a computer and 
you know, sooner or later we will have to s- sort of like find a solution for powering what if it's all a documentary? those. <laughs> Dude, well, uh, actually, yeah, no. What if scary. what if it's this? What if it's like we are in Matrix, and they, like the stable, like the Matrix, the film, and then the AI release, and like the deep fakes. All of the all of those are like the blips that are telling you, like, wake up, follow the white rabbit. You know? <laughs> yeah. Dude, there are some uh, thesis or ideas of uh, the fact that, uh, and it's it's getting much more popular than before that we are living in simulation. Right. Yeah, and if you think about it, like there was a there was a um, hypothesis or idea that um, that uh, we sort of like um, about UFOs and things like that, you know, and and tr- you know, time travels and and it's so so abstract that you can actually come up with so weird idea that can happen because everything is possible. We can because in the future something someone can you know invent something and there will be like a possible time travel and you can go back and you know it's it, you can write down so freaking weird scenarios that can be somehow possible and no one can actually say no to that right now because we don't have this technology to to check that to prove that or right to, de- to deny that, you know, and it's so cool that, you know, hearing all those scenarios, possible scenarios and that are more or less believable. And I think it's, uh, you know, partially some of the films that were produced like in, uh, in the late 90, 1990s or, or early 2000, um, they were like uh, so, so sci-fi back then. But right now we look at, look at those like, uh, more or less like a, something that can really happen. <laughs> it's because everyone who's making the tech right now grew up in those movies. <laughs> yeah. So, dude, like the Simpsons are predicting the future. Like, Yeah, because those... the guy who fucking co- is coding your next iPhone fucking watch Simpsons dude, religiously. <laughs> time travel is possible. Damn Eventually, it. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's wild. All right. Let's, it's crazy. let's, uh, I mean, we've been talking for like over two hours. It's fucking crazy that, like, how th- time is yeah. flying. And I feel like we should do it again, like sometime Dude, soon. It's, like maybe it's f- worth it. Yeah. Like f- maybe a few months from now. So you like just kind of do it like a recap, like how many of our predictions oh, yeah. were actually real. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be fun to do. Uh, what do you think? Like if you, if you, if you kind of like do a summary, if you're like in the position of an artist, because this is something that I think a lot of like inspi- aspiring artists are definitely struggling with, like the whole concept of like how AI is affecting or even like current artists, like we all went through, some of us are still going through, but there's definitely like a mental health re- relationship to it and the sense of dread, like is my is my industry going away? What's the best thing to do? And, you know, everyone has a different opinion on how to approach this this subject, like where do you think this is all going to go in coming months and years? And like, if you were not in the position you are, or maybe like even w- with your kind of approach to it, like what what do you think you're going to go with this subject? Are you going to be like waiting to see how things pan out or like you don't really care? It's it's a tool like that sort of like this. I, I kind of, I've kind of, it's growing on me to be that kind of approach. Like I, I, f- I think... I I look at it more of more of a tool and like how to like utilize it in a in a legal and proper way to actually do stuff whether it's going to be successful or not time will tell but um yeah I, I'm curious like what do you what is your uh what is your approach to the whole to the whole subject um looking at my uh career choices uh over the past like 3 even 4 maybe years um I sort of like Take uh, took a path, a direction towards the combining the traditional art and digital art, and sort of like getting to the roots and to the like the primal knowledge of of you know classical paintings. And because you know when I come up with my brushes, because I actually created that because I was like feeling really weird doing Photoshop. Like I felt this 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 artificial uh, yeah. factor that is still like visible noticeable for me that i want to get rid of that but and then i come up with those brushes that were like more like organically 
feeling like normal brush and i was enjoying painting in that it, with, with those brushes and and right now i'm trying to like you know I, I was trying to imitate those paintings and then over time i started to paint more and more traditionally and uh ai is something that um showed up on my path uh you know without any any plans to that but but i think um we have to and i have to react to the issues and violations that are happening and i think it's a uh, it's our part of our responsibility in our industry like whenever we see something that is clearly a violation you know okay yeah. let's work on that because it's it will ruin our our you know safe environment in, in the industry you know and i think it's it's normal because everyone see see the the progress pro progression of ai as a something that is not 100% uh whether good or bad you know mm -hmm. no it's it's partially good partially bad but we sh it should be you know really important to see those good sides and bad sides and i think bad sides are not bad because they are bad it's because they're hurting people and affecting their career and we should work on that and i'm kind of like trying to react to that and but my career path uh, is is like um is something that going without any you know being affected more or less um uh, by this ai i mean maybe not career it's more more like i will paint either way you know even yeah. if ai will, will you know uh be very same yeah industry standard no i will st still I will be still painting traditionally because that gives me a joy. That's what what I want to you know do. And whether th this will be a profitable thing or not prof not profitable thing, I still want to do that. And I think by the you know the fact that I devoted like probably my whole life to 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 you know to painting and drawing and being creative is is really re rewarding. Uh, that you can actually see the results that finally you can create something that is like in in 50 or 60 percent that you imagined in the in the, in the beginning right. and it's getting to the results uh getting close and closer to the results initial result uh, initial idea it's, it's really re rewarding and i think i will still do that and i recommend recommend most of the people especially artists that are concerned about what is happening right now they should still you know remain untouched when it comes to their initial creative ideas like just paint create it can be it can be similar to nft you know we all had some hopes and we 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 thought that you know nft will okay this will be like my retirement because i will you know most of the people were like yeah this is a solution for digital artists you know to be a kind of like a to match with traditional artists but eventually it it turned out that it was like uh maybe not it i mean technology wasn't wasn't bad but as you mentioned like people people like destroyed the the, the whole thing and yeah. by the stupid monkeys in five minute crafts you know in photoshop it's 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 you know that was that wasn't the initial direction and we we can't predict what will happen with ai art and ai will be developed definitely and it, it will progress but ai art can come to the to the peak let's say in a within like a year or two and they'll be like constant the same quality they will be looking for diversity and different styles but maybe possibly there will uh be some regulations within like those two years and that's why i like don't give up on your hopes don't give up on your dreams and just you know pursue your your you know uh passion basically I think I have a perfect summary of you, what you just said and what we discussed is like, don't like, obviously don't sleep on AI, but like, if, if you only look at it from a perspective of just prompting and then like, oh, I can make, make stuff like artists without being an artist. Like, I think you're going to be in a rude awakening a couple of years from now when yeah. that's going to have no value. So when you said like, don't give up on your like creative hopes, I, I think that's where that's where the edge is. That's where, you know, if, if you are, you are inheritably like creative and like you like to create, you like to like challenge yourself, 
I, I don't think there's there's no, like there shouldn't be any worry for for a person like that. Like I feel like you, you you'll find your way. Um, it will become a tool. Like work towards AI art. Like that's sort of like my my personal approach. I, I'm working like the 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 reason I'm learning this and like I have it on my radar, and I you know experiment with those tools is just to see is any of this fun creatively and actually pushes me creatively. If yes, then let's use that as a part. And is it a tool or is it like basically out of the box solution? Because if it's a ladder, then I know, I know that that's just not a viable option. It's, mm -hmm. It will be cool now. It will, it will like get everyone's attention. Sure. But if I put all, all my eggs in that basket, I'm done. Like I'll be, I'll wake up with like, you know, a dread that oh shit like this is going away too because it, it, it eventually yeah. will it's just gonna it's just gonna keep progressing so ah oh, exactly what a time to live in huh <laughs> damn it it's crazy I mean uh, yeah yeah definitely like crazy I think it's the best word for that yeah. because it, it's like crazy uh, you know crazy bad crazy terrifying crazy exciting and it, yeah crazy. All right, Greg. What's on your on your radar for like? Is there anything coming up that you want people hear, hear about or uh, uh, working working yeah. find you all that kind of stuff before uh, we wrap it I'll, up? I'll be I'll be releasing my art book pretty soon. Uh, Sweet. Actually, where can yeah, people find finally that about it? Um, there will be like Kickstarter campaign. Definitely. Oh, all right, yeah. all right. So I'll post it on my social media. Um, and many projects that are like uh, are hidden. <laughs> <laughs> the good old NDA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I can't really tell too much. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, cool. But anyways, yeah, it's 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 going it's going pretty well. So where where can people follow you so that they don't miss out on any of that? Damn it! Uh, good I stuff. would recommend. Yeah, um, I normally I would recommend Art Station, but uh, since our station, I'm still, you know, I'm in a point where I'm, I'm not really sure what to do with my art station because I have like all my history, like uh, the same with different art. Like I would really love to, I would really, I mean, I would be willing to like delete all my accounts to not feed the, you know, AI generators. It's on but your then, website though. <laughs> yeah. It's like. <laughs> Damn it! I have like whole history there, and even dates where where I posted it, and it's it's kind of like a, you know, like a journal of my career. And I just I don't know. I'm kind of like a sentimental person. <laughs> <laughs> do you do yeah. you uh, have like social accounts that people can follow, or like you don't really yeah. care, or just what your yeah. website? Yeah, I'm usually posting right now. I'm posting on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay. Three, three, I'll link those below. <laughs> cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to spell it. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Like, it's, um, my name is so hard. To cool. <laughs> uh, dude, it's been nice catching up. It's been like years. And I, I like we on and off sometimes like talk to each other and like obviously both Polish, Polish. So there's like, yeah. a, little bit, a little bit like a camaraderie, like the dude, yo, Polska like, camaraderie. Polska, yeah. <laughs> Pierogi. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but let's let's definitely do it again I'm, I'm, I'm like i want to have like as many conversations with artists and obviously like there are certain certain names that i value like not only as friends but also like as people who are you know pretty important in the industry like you're one of them obviously so we should I, I, like if you're down for it we should totally do it again like in a couple of months see where what yeah, the landscape is yeah see if like our our assumptions of, of what's good and what's bad are like playing that would out be great. at all <laughs> that would be great really i mean yeah awesome cool all right let's wrap it up here thanks everybody thanks cool